Hey guys, today we're gonna to be doing a totally free practical Fiverr SEO course for beginners. The goal of this course is to bring you up to speed on SEO as it relates to Fiverr and your Fiverr gigs so that you can get to a point where your gigs are ranking highly in Fiverr search and making you a ton of money. Let's get into the course. All right guys, so this is the course, the Fiverr SEO course for beginners. So I just wanna outline a couple of scenarios that I imagine might happen if you do go through this course and follow all of the exercises and tips that I provide here. The best case scenario is that once you finish this course, you might have an understanding of SEO that will allow you to create Fiverr gigs that rank highly in Fiverr search and generate revenue for your freelance business. That's the best case scenario, and that's honestly my goal here is to get you to that point. The worst case scenario is that you finish this course and have a basic understanding of SEO, but are not quite at the point where your gigs are ranking at the top of Fiverr search results. So in this scenario, your gigs will still likely rank higher than they did prior to taking the course, which is great, but you might need some more practice. So my background, this is the, the slide that's supposed to validate things and give you a feel for why you should bother listening to the information I provide you in this course. So I've been a Fiverr seller for three plus years and I've been a Fiverr prorated seller since 2021. In that time, I've made over $82,000 as a Fiverr seller, and I think that's pretty impressive because Fiverr has always been my side hustle. I just spend a couple of weeks on it, and a reason I've been able to be so successful is due to having an understanding of SEO, so hopefully I can impart, impart that knowledge on you as well. Along with Fiverr, I've been a content creator for three plus years. So I create a lot of content on YouTube and my blogs, and a lot of my content gets traffic from search results, which is, which is a direct result of SEO. Um, I've also taken the search engine optimization specialization uh, through University of California Davis through Coursera. I did course one and two, had a 94 average. It was a really helpful course. I've also spent years studying SEO in my own spare time. There's a ton of blogs and YouTube videos that have been super helpful. And over the years, I've implemented and practiced SEO best practices on my own websites, my own blogs, and my YouTube channel. So that's me. That's how I've gained you know, the understanding that I have about SEO. Um, and just a little screenshot here. So this is my main Fiverr gig where I write email marketing and sales emails for people. I just put a screenshot here of my gig statistics. So for the last six months, they've gained 89,000 impressions. So an impression is every time my gig appears on someone's screen in Fiverr search. So that's pretty good. And then on YouTube, just to kind of show you what I mean with regard to how my understanding of SEO helps me in the things that I do. So this is my YouTube channel. I believe this is over the last 12 months. In that time, I've gotten 1.7 million views and almost 13 million impressions. And just this bottom portion here, 40% of my traffic is from YouTube search which has to do with the SEO and the strategy with regard to SEO that I incorporate into my YouTube videos. So hopefully this last slide on my Fiverr gig showing you the impressions I'm able to generate through SEO and my YouTube channel gives you a good feel for the fact that I have a pretty decent understanding of this. All right, so this is the course breakdown. So I've broken it down into chapters just so you know what to expect. Part one, we're gonna talk about what is SEO, explain it to you so you have an understanding. Part two, we're gonna talk about how SEO helps you make money on Fiverr if you don't already know. Part three, we're gonna talk about how you can learn SEO. Part four, we're gonna talk about how you can incorporate SEO into your Fiverr gig. So this is probably gonna be the most valuable part of this course. And then part five is just the conclusion of the course. All right, so part one. What is SEO? So this is the dictionary definition of SEO. Search engine optimization is what it stands for, by the way. So SEO is the process of maximizing the number of visitors to a particular website by ensuring that the site appears high on the list of results returned by a search engine. So I wrote this in you know, my own words. So my definition, if it's easier for you to understand, is that SEO is the process of including keywords and keyword phrases on web pages that are likely to be similar to what site visitors might be searching for. I don't know if that makes it easier for you, but that's kind of an easy way that I think of SEO. All right, so what is a keyword? 
So a keyword is an informative word used in an information retrieval system to indicate the content of a document. Pretty straightforward. My definition is a word or words that help stuff get discovered in search engines because that's ultimately what you're using keywords for when you're thinking about SEO. All right, so here are just a couple quick screenshots to give you an idea of what a keyword is or how to find one. So this is a screenshot of one of my YouTube thumbnails. The title here, Easy Email Copywriting Tutorial Step-by-Step. -step. So the main keyword I was focused on here is email copywriting. That's the word that I wanted to use because that's the word that I thought people would be searching for in YouTube who are interested in this type of video. Another example is a blog post I did, a book review on Outliers by Malcolm Gladwell. So Outliers or Malcolm Gladwell, excuse me, Outliers or Malcolm Gladwell could be the focus keywords. So in the case of something like a book review, people who are interested in Malcolm Gladwell might be searching for just Malcolm Gladwell, or if they're looking for something more specific, more niche down, they might be searching for a review on Outliers. So both of those can be considered keywords for that blog post. All right, so part two, how does SEO help you make money on Fiverr? Because that's what this is all about, right? You're selling on Fiverr to make money and you're watching this video because you want to figure out SEO so that your gigs can actually get noticed and make you some money. So here are the ways that SEO can help you make money on Fiverr. It helps Fiverr's search algorithm understand what your gigs are about. Also, a gig with solid SEO has a higher chance of appearing in a related search query. That's pretty straightforward. And gigs that appear on the first page of search results likely have a higher chance of being purchased over gigs that are buried deep within the results. And applying a solid SEO strategy gives you the power to influence the traffic to your gig without necessarily having to spend a lot of money on promotion. So if you're really good at SEO and you can apply it in a way that gets your gig traffic, you could save yourself some marketing dollars, which is great. So when I say that SEO helps your gigs get discovered, here's a quick screenshot of Fiverr's Pro Marketplace. I believe this is for the email copy category, yep. So if you have solid SEO and you've done a good job aligning it with what people are likely searching for, your gig might appear here at the top of search which is amazing, right? Like these people have a really good chance of getting noticed and having their gigs purchased. Part three, how to learn SEO. So here are the four ways that I went about learning a thing or two about SEO. I recommend kind of considering and going after all of these, right? Like the reality is with something like SEO, there's no one piece of information that you're gonna consume and you're suddenly gonna become a master. There's a lot of things that go into becoming really good at SEO. Experience, understanding of SEO, practice, all of these things matter. So number one is I spent a lot of time researching and studying using free online resources. Blogs, like SEO blogs and web traffic blogs were a huge help for me. And there's also nowadays a ton of YouTube channels that have really, really either in-depth or broad courses about SEO that you can check out for free. The second thing that I'm a big advocate of and really had a huge impact on me getting better with SEO was real world practice. So I've done blogs for a while, my own blogs, I've written about interests of mine. That was good practice. I've run a bunch of different websites on a bunch of different topics and in the process, you kind of study and learn how to get those websites to rank in search. That helps you build your SEO skills as well. And then YouTube videos. So I, I make a lot of videos on YouTube. Big part of succeeding on YouTube is selecting really good subject lines and YouTube video descriptions that uh, help your videos rank. So these are all things that I did that really helped. I also took a paid course. So the Coursera SEO specialization, I think is a fantastic option. Coursera is a pretty accessible paid learning platform. It's not super expensive compared to others out there. And this course was actually really, really good. It was taught by an instructor at the University of California, Davis. I took the first two courses and it really leveled up my understanding of, of SEO and it was really helpful, highly recommend. And the fourth thing you can do, which is kind of like just a cool thing that I do in my spare time, is if you haven't heard of Google Trends, Google Trends is a really cool tool that'll give you an idea of what type of search, search terms or search queries are trending at any given time. 
which is pretty neat and helpful when you're thinking about SEO. So ju just to kind of illustrate some of the things I do, this is my YouTube channel. You'll see all the different subject lines. I spend a lot of time thinking about SEO and researching keywords when I make these videos. That's really helped me level up my game. My blog, same thing. We used the Malcolm Gladwell example earlier. When you're writing these things, you want them to be engaging, but you also want to have search terms and keywords in there so that they might appear in Google. And then this is the UC Davis Coursera course I was talking about. 121,000 people have enrolled. This was a really helpful course, and you know I might even take it again one of these days and go further with it because it was super, super helpful. And this is Google Trends. So as I mentioned, it's just a really cool free tool that you can use. You type in a search term. So I put how to make money online. Tells you the, the places where you're from that it's most heavily searched. You can even filter this by the world. It gives you related topics, which is you know a helpful thing if you want to add some related keywords to strengthen the SEO on a particular web page and also related queries to help you out. This is a really awesome tool. All right, part four, incorporating SEO into your Fiverr gigs. So where does SEO matter? This is a really, really important question because understanding SEO is one thing, but understanding where it matters with, with regard to Fiverr is another thing because ultimately you want to apply SEO to your Fiverr gigs so that they appear and get purchased. And the answer is it matters everywhere. Everywhere Fiverr gives you an opportunity to enter text, you should be thinking about both SEO and how to write it in a way that sounds human and doesn't just destroy how your gig sounds. So I put some arrows here. Your gig title matters. Your gig descriptions matter. Your Fiverr profile descriptions matter. Uh, and your gig tags and your gig packages. Basically anywhere where you can fill out text in Fiverr, you should be inserting some strategically placed keywords there um, in places like your gig description. You want to do that with a little bit of nuance though. You want to make it a good description as well. You want it to read well, make sense, be informative, but also have SEO or keywords incorporated in it. So this is the next question you're probably asking. How do I figure out what keywords I should use? And that's a fantastic question. And the, the answer is that it's not super difficult. So here's how I go about picking keywords on Fiverr, and this is a really practical approach that any of you can use to find some good keywords. The first thing is to put yourself in your potential client's shoes and think about the types of search terms they might actually be using when searching for the stuff they wanna buy on Fiverr. If you can think of that, that's a great starting point because if you can match the keywords in your gigs to what they're actually searching for, that's going to help you rank really, 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 really well. The next thing you want to think about is think about the common ways that certain services are described online. Um, you know, if you're targeting customers in a particular demographic, a particular area of the world, try to humanize the keywords you're using so that you're writing them in the way that people are likely to address them or communicate them to one another. Because this can differ from place to place, right? Uh, the, the third and easiest thing you can do that's probably the most telling is to research what your top competition is using. So a couple slides ago, I showed you the search results page for email copy in the pro marketplace. All those gigs on the top couple lines, those are probably great examples of gigs that are doing a great job when it comes to keywords. So take a look at them, see if you can find any themes or trends across the gigs, keywords that they're all using in common and try to incorporate them into your own gigs. And the fourth one, this is a little sneaky one that I like to do, is to use Fiverr's search autocorrect feature. So if you start typing a phrase or a word in Fiverr search, just like Google, it'll give you some suggestions for what you might be trying to say. And those suggestions might be some common search terms that people are looking for. So you might wanna implement those into your approach as well. So here's an example, you know, I mentioned using your competitors. So if you just click, you know, using the categories menu, you go to email copy or whatever your category is, then you're presented with the first page of search results and just look at what people are using. Sales emails, email autoresponder, email sequences, email campaigns, email copy, email content, marketing emails, marketing emails, SaaS product emails, 
email, marketing campaign, these are all key words, right? So depending on the gig you're trying to offer, use this as inspiration to figure out what types of keywords you should use in your own. Uh, pro tip, this is super important. So when I took that SEO course through Coursera, one of the things it taught me was that search engines do not like it when content is copied word for word. So I talk about competitor research when it comes to selecting keywords for your Fiverr gigs. Do not simply copy the gigs of your competition. Odds are Fiverr, if it operates like most other search engines, it might penalize that gig for being a copy. And I know that there's a you can actually report gigs that are copying other gigs. So use them as inspiration to figure out the keywords, but write unique gig descriptions to suit your own unique specific gigs. Trust me, this will help you. Uh, and this is just an example of Fiverr's autocorrect feature. So up here I typed email and then it autocorrected it to this bunch of this list of potential keywords, email marketing, email signature, email sequence, email signature, HTML, email copy, email template, cold email, email template, HTML. These are all great examples and these are actually solid keywords that you might want to consider using for your own gig. So I know I used email as the example here, but regardless what you're doing, put the first word of the service in the search bar and see what it spits out and think about whether or not these might be solid keywords that you want to use for your gigs. Um, and then when you're adding your gigs to your, or, or when you're adding your keywords to your gigs, here's just some tips to help guide you. So the first is to always focus on, focus on inserting keywords in a way where the body of the text still reads naturally. So I mentioned this before. Certain keyword phrases you are probably longer than others, some are not, but regardless of how long the keyword is, you want to insert them into your description in a way where it doesn't ruin the description. You still want the description to be descriptive, to be helpful in your buyers understanding what it is you sell, while at the same time, having the keywords in there for the search algorithm to pick up and rank your gigs. Do not keyword stuff. So keyword stuffing is where you make a list of like 10, 20, 30, however many keywords, and you just insert them into your description in a block of text. This is super amateur, super rookie move. And again, in the SEO course I've taken in the past, this is actually something that some search engines will penalize you for. So you want to avoid that. Um, one thing, you, one really good tip is to try to think of related keywords to also include in your description. So um, if email marketing is what you're targeting, um, you could write, you know, email templates, get more clients, email conversion. There's a whole bunch of different keywords that are all related in some way to that same thing you're focusing on. So when you're writing your gig descriptions, you have your main keywords that you're primarily targeting, but try to think of some other ways people describe those services or, or related keywords that you can insert and that will further help your gigs strengthen uh, the search engine's level of confidence with what it's about. So when people are searching for either your main keyword or related keywords, it gives it a better chance of showing up. Uh, and, and again, try to take advantage of all the available real estate in the form of the text fields that Fiverr gives you to work with on your Fiverr profile and gigs. So as I mentioned earlier, everywhere that you can put text, you should be thinking about inserting keywords. And with that, you should make sure to use as much of that space as possible. Fiverr only gives you a limited number of characters and words that you can use. So you might as well use it to your advantage, make it as descriptive as possible and pack in as many related keywords as you can. All right, so part five, what is next? So now you have all these ideas on what to do with SEO and how it might impact your gigs. So what's next is, that's it, you're on the clock, it's on you. Take this information, take what you've learned here and start applying it to your gig. Start doing your research, start putting your head, putting yourself in your client's shoes and thinking about solid keywords so that you can get to a point where your gigs are ranking highly in search. And, and trust me, if you can get to that point where your gigs are ranking higher, 
just through the process of getting them to rank higher, you're going to become more of an expert. You're going to get more of an understanding of your buyer's persona, and you're going to become a better freelancer. So that's it for this tutorial, this course. I hope it was really helpful. If you have any questions, or if anything was ambiguous, leave it in the comments and I'll do my best to answer it for you. So thank you so much for watching and until next time, cheers.